Hi everybody, this is Karen Shapiro. I'm a clinical pharmacist and an instructor for Rx Prep. And today we are going to do our first presentation on drug interactions and discuss what is an enzyme inducer, what is an enzyme inhibitor, and what is a prodrug. These are very important topics for people who are involved with drug therapy. Inducers decrease the concentration of the substrate drug. We're going to use warfarin as an example. Warfarin is subject to a lot of drug interactions. Warfarin is a racemic compound, so it's metabolized by two different enzymes. But for the moment, we're going to uh, just simplify this and look at warfarin metabolism in general. So warfarin, uh, you swallow the warfarin pill. It goes through first pass metabolism. We're using the liver as an example of first pass metabolism where much of it takes place. And these numbers are just numbers, for example, they're not uh, actual. But let's pretend that 60% of warfarin comes out. So we've lost 40% to drug metabolism. And this patient's INR is maintained at about 2.5. And that is perfect for this patient because they have uh, one of the two common conditions for which warfarin is prescribed, DVT or afibrillation, the most common type of arrhythmia, and we want to keep the INR right around 2.5. The range is 2 to 3, so right in the middle would be perfect. And that's what we've got in this case. And now the patient has been put on rifampin. This is, uh, I call this the mother of all enzyme inducers. It is the line in the sand you do not want to cross but sometimes you have to use it. Let's say this patient has tuberculosis and rifampin is commonly uh, used for that. And rifampin, like other enzyme inducers, will cause more uh, uh, enzymes. Uh, and so you can see this liver had some enzymes that metabolize warfarin. Now they've been on rifampin for a little while. The enzyme induction has kicked up you can see the liver is just flooded with this enzyme. Poor warfarin does not have a chance. It is going to go in through first pass and hardly any of it's gonna come out. Let's say 10% of it is now available uh, systemically because most of it was destroyed here. And now the INR goes down to, let's say about 1.2. Well, this is almost normal. A person not on warfarin has an INR of about one. And so this person is not anticoagulated and they are at risk for um, a heart attack, a stroke, uh, uh, due to whatever condition that they have. And so this is a dangerous situation. When you add rifampin to a patient on warfarin, you have to increase the warfarin dose about 100 to 300% in order to overcome this enzyme induction. Okay, now we've got the opposite. We've got a drug that is going to increase, not decrease, the amount of warfarin. And that's because we're going to show an example of an enzyme inhibitor. So here we've got warfarin again, same example. About 60% is going to come out, and we're going to have the INR at about 2.5. This is almost makes me laugh, because people who have worked with this drug know that the INR very rarely stays at the absolute perfect number, but this is an ideal case, so let's pretend that it is. And now this patient has a arrhythmia. Uh, in other words, their heart is not in normal sinus rhythm, and the clinician has added on the most popular antiarrhythmic drug, amiodarone, a known enzyme inhibitor. And what do inhibitors do? Well, they work by different mechanisms, but the net effect is that the enzyme is no longer able to metabolize the drug. And so I put X's through many of these enzymes to show that they are not functional. And so with amiodarone, you're going to have much more warfarin. Let's pretend that 94% now comes out. And what happens to this INR? The INR shoots up. Let's give this patient an INR of 4.8. Now the INR is too high. The patient is at risk for bleeding. And so this is a problem here. Now, if amiodarone was started at the same time as warfarin, warfarin would be at a much lower dose. So in this example, the patient was on warfarin first, amiodarone was added, 
to a patient who had a therapeutic INR. The dose of warfarin should have been cut. This should have been, this interaction should have been anticipated. Okay, now what I said is true, except if the patient is on a prodrug. A prodrug is when you've got a drug that is inactive and it's converted, uh, enzymatically converted to the active form. And if you've got a prodrug, the opposite happens. Inducers will increase the substrate. Remember, inducers usually decrease the substrate drug, like rifampin. Inhibitors with prodrugs will decrease the substrate. Inhibitors usually increase the substrate. So you can see prodrugs have the opposite effect. Let's look at an example here. I'm not going to use a prodrug, but something similar. Let's look at codeine. Codeine is metabolized in part to morphine. Part of it becomes morphine. And it's converted to morphine by the 2D6 enzyme. These little enzymes are cytochrome P450, 2D6. And here's a person uh, with a normal amount of 2D6, and they convert some percentage of codeine to morphine. Now we've got a person who is on either a 2D6 inducer or happens to have a lot of 2D6. Some people have a lot of 2D6 because they produce a lot of this enzyme. And if they do, so they're either on an inducer or they're on 2D6, what's gonna happen? A lot more codeine is going to get transferred into morphine. Let me tell you why I picked this example. I picked it because this past year, uh, a woman who was breastfeeding a baby was given a normal dose of codeine for uh, pain. She had just had, um, uh, she had just given birth and the physician prescribed her codeine. Normally it's safe. I don't like this drug because it's constipating, it has a lot of GI side effects, and because I'm worried as a pharmacist about what if I give codeine to a person who has a lot of this enzyme? They're going to get a lot of morphine. That's what happened in this case. The, pers the, uh, the mother produced a lot of morphine. The morphine went right into the breast milk. The baby died of respiratory depression. And the FDA has issued an alert because of this interaction, so I thought I would use it as a um, example in this case to remind us to be watching for breastfeeding women. They could certainly be using another analgesic that does not have this risk. Okay, so you can see in this case, the inducer or the rapid metabolizer ends up with more drug, not less. And now let's look at an example of an inhibitor. And this is probably the number one news story in pharmacy the last couple of years. Well, one of the top news stories. And this has to do with clopidogrel. What is this drug? This is Plavix. And we will recognize this drug. It's very popular. It's given as 75 milligrams Q daily, and it is used commonly in patients who have had a stent put into a coronary artery in order to keep the coronary artery open in order to prevent a heart attack. And this is commonly given with aspirin. So clopidogrel, Plavix, goes into the liver and it is metabolized by the 2C19 enzyme. These are 2C19 enzymes to the active drug. So this is active drug. So when a patient swallows Plavix, they're not swallowing anything that's active. It needs to be metabolized to the active drug. And what do you know, for years, patients have been taking proton pump inhibitors. These are super popular drugs. You almost are un-American if you are not on a proton pump inhibitor and a sleep agent. You could get kicked out of the country. I'm joking, but you know what I mean. Lots of people are on these drugs. Omeprazole, esomeprazole, fluoxetine is another 2C19 inhibitor, but these are PPIs. These two right here, are very, popu very popular PPIs. This is Nexium, this is Prilosec. And what happens? These drugs are 2C19 inhibitors, so they inactivate this enzyme. And you know what happens? You get very, very little, little, activated Plavix. So in this case, the inhibitor, instead of increasing the Plavix, it decreased the active Plavix because Plavix, clopidogrel, is a prodrug. 
What happens if you don't have enough Plavix? This is a very dangerous interaction. You get this. You get a heart attack. And this is unnecessary. So the recommendation now is we can use the uh, newer antiplatelet agent uh, that's come out. Or uh, you could use a Protonix. That one is not thought to interact uh, with a Plavix in order to avoid this interaction. And that finishes our discussion about inducers, inhibitors, and prodrugs. So just to review, inducers lower the concentration of the substrate unless it's a prodrug. Inhibitors raise the concentration of the substrate unless it's a prodrug. Then they're opposite. If you need more, you want to become a drug therapy expert, uh, you can go to our website, rxprep.com, and we've got our textbook. It is complete. It is updated for the new NAPLEX blueprint. It's current and updated every fall for the following year. It always comes out in January. We've got our live and online courses. If you take the online course, you can review any topic you need as often as you like, wherever you have internet access. And then we've got our popular iPhone app. And this um, quiz bank is also available on our website for people uh, like myself that do not have an iPhone. You can use uh, access the same questions off of our website as many times as you need in order to get a perfect score. So thanks for listening and take good care.